Number one, the Fed gives us all the four letter solutions straight from their playbook in 2008. It starts with the PDCF. We discussed this briefly on Wednesday's video. We'll dive into it further today. The primary dealer credit facility. Next, MMLF or MILF, <laughs> whichever you prefer. I'll let you guess which one I prefer. This is the money market fund liquidity facility. I've also seen it online as the Money Market Mutual Fund Liquidity Facility. And as you guys know, I'm all about accuracy and facts on this channel. So to get this straight, let's go right to Siri. Siri, the Fed has come up with a new MILF program. What is MILF? Mom, I'd like to f <laughs> You think that Jerome Powell and the 900 PhDs at the Fed would have thought that one through a little bit more. But moving on, the Commercial Paper Funding Facility, or CPFF, and the FX swap lines, they've always been there, but they've expanded them. We'll go into that in step number two. The discount window, they've made some subtle changes there that make big big differences. And of course, this is layered on top of everybody's favorite, QE Infinity. Step number two, the Fed's solutions explained. We start with the PDCF, Primary Dealer Credit Facility. The primary dealers have their bank account with the Fed. The Fed injects all this funny money, which they call reserves, into those accounts. Right now, the primary dealers have over 1.5 trillion in excess reserves. So they can take those reserves, go into the stock market and the corporate bond market to buy stocks and bonds, which go on to the primary dealers balance sheets. That funny money that was just printed by the Fed then goes from the primary dealers to the entities the primary dealers bought the assets from. So hedge funds, financial institutions, retail investors, etc. They take the money, deposit it at their bank. So the amount of deposits in the real economy grows as a result. So let's do this one more time. The Fed prints the funny money. The primary dealers take it. They put it into the real economy by buying financial assets. This increases the deposits at retail banks, which increases the money supply, potentially leading to inflation. A couple things I want to point out here, very important. First and foremost, in order for the deposits to increase in the real economy, the primary dealers had to do something. It was up to them. The Fed can't inject the funny money directly into the economy without the primary dealers taking action. Next, let's go on to the flow of how this works. The corporate bonds and stocks go on to the balance sheets of the primary dealers. The Fed says, listen, we'll give you a loan for those assets. So the primary dealers say, great, we'll do it. So the stocks and bonds they just bought go from their balance sheet to the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve. What does the Fed do? They print up more funny money and deposit it into the accounts of the primary dealers. And of course, they say this is a loan, but it's at almost 0% interest. And who's to say the primary dealers can't just continually roll over this loan to infinity? So if it's a 0% loan and you can roll it over to infinity, is it really a loan? Or is the Fed just buying corporate bonds and stocks through the mechanism of the primary dealers? What they're saying is they're taking the stocks and corporate bonds that the primary dealers have already purchased off their balance sheet and giving them a loan so they have more liquidity. But you see the slippery slope. 
even if we take what they're saying at face value, and this is just a loan for the primary dealers to increase liquidity by taking assets off their balance sheet. Think about it. These stocks, corporate bonds, and there's a variety of other assets that you could throw in there, but they've taken a shellacking over the last 30 days. So who's to say that the Fed isn't just taking them off their balance sheet at 100 cents to the dollar to make them whole. To Peter Schiff's point, it could be a bailout for the primary dealers just as easily as it could be the Fed playing the plunge protection team through the primary dealers themselves like we just explained. Next, let's explain everybody's favorite Fed four-letter solution, and that is MILF, or the Money Market Fund Liquidity Facility. Yes, there you go. Money Market Fund takes cash from businesses and retail investors, goes into the corporate bond market, commercial paper market. The cash goes from the Money Market Fund to the balance sheet of ABC Corp, which issues debt. That's now a liability on their balance sheet. The debt goes down to the balance sheet of the money market fund as an asset. Those are the corporate bonds and the commercial paper. On the liability side of the money market fund's balance sheet, they have the IOUs to the businesses and the retail investors. So far, so good. Insert the Cerveza sickness. The market looks at ABC Corp and says, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't even know if you're going to be in business in the next two months. At very least, it's going to be a rocky road. We don't want to lend you any more money. Demand goes down, interest rates go up, which makes it harder for ABC Corp to stay in business because the funding they need to manage their day-to-day -day operation gets more and more expensive. Also, the retail investors and the businesses look at what's going on in the marketplace and say, listen, we don't want to take any of this risk either. Plus, we've got to pay our own bills. We don't have any revenue coming in. We don't have any income. We want our cash back ASAP. That's a redemption for the money market fund. The only way they can give them the cash is if they sell the corporate bonds and the commercial paper off their balance sheet back into the market. That creates more supply, which takes interest rates even higher. It's this buzz light year system where interest rates just keep going up and up and up. That would completely crash the system. The Fed knows this. So they go to the money market funds and say, listen, time out. Don't sell any more of the commercial paper or corporate bonds. We'll lend you the money to pay the investors. Again, who knows if this is a loan I mean, they say it's max 90 days, but they can probably roll it over. There's 0% interest. So that's a whole other topic. The bottom line is the Fed lends them the money to pay off the investors. So the Fed's balance sheet now has the money market loan and additional reserves. How did it get those reserves? Because it had to print the funny money to give to the money market. The money market fund gives it to the investor. They deposit it in their retail bank and the reserves for the retail bank are held at the Fed. So that's why the Fed's balance sheet stays in balance. The balance sheet of the money market fund now has smaller IOUs to the investors, but of course, they have the Fed loan as a liability, but more importantly, they still have the assets of the corporate bonds and the commercial paper. They were never forced to sell it into the market, increasing interest rates. The Fed artificially keeps those interest rates low. But notice the Fed is still expanding their balance sheet. They're having to print money, and this is creating more deposits in the real economy because the transactions aren't just with the primary dealers, they're also with the money market funds and the retail investors and the businesses. Very important that we're always remembering that these temporary facilities, or probably permanent facilities, that they're setting up are creating additional deposits, therefore additional money in the real economy. Next, let's explain the CPFF, Commercial Paper Funding Facility. The CEO, the fat cat CEO says, help, 
I've got to make a $2,000 payment and I don't have the cash. The only thing I have on the asset side of my balance sheet is equipment and goodwill. The Fed steps in and says, no problem. Go ahead and issue us the debt. We'll give you the cash through the commercial paper market. So ABC Corp issues the debt, goes to the Fed. On the Fed side, I'm saying that it's a corporate loan, exact same thing. And the Fed gives the fat cat CEO the $2,000 or maybe more that he needs to put the cash on his balance sheet. So at the beginning, the fat cat ABC Corp balance sheet has equipment and goodwill on the asset side, liability side, debt and equity. After the Fed gives them the quote unquote loan, the asset side of their balance sheet still has the equipment, still has the goodwill. Now they have the cash from the Fed, the liability side. They have less debt because they made that $2,000 debt payment. They've got equity and the loan from the Fed. Of course, the Fed's balance sheet continues to expand. We've got the corporate loan on the asset side and more reserves on the liability side. How did the reserves get there? Same exact same thing as the MILF example. They printed up the funny money, the deposit went to ABC Corp, which moved that deposit to the bank account of whomever they owed the money. Wherever the deposit came to rest, the reserves have to be held with that bank. That bank's reserve account is with the Fed. This is how their balance sheet continues to grow and grow. So that's pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of a backstop, an even further backstop than MILF, which was already backstopping the commercial paper market, but this is an increased safety valve maybe. Well, we also had a change to the discount window where they tried to drop the interest rate. I'm pretty sure they did to where it's the Fed funds. Generally the discount rate, in order to get that cash from the discount window, the entity has to pay a premium. Additionally, there's a stigma attached to the discount window because the market assumes that if XYZ Corp or bank or whomever goes to the discount window, that means they're out of business. So it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. So some of the primary dealer banks I've read have started to use the discount window just to eliminate that stigma. It's totally ridiculous. It's like the market won't see what's going on, but that's a whole other story. The main thing is the Fed lowered the rate to where they are paying Fed funds. So all the banks that are outside the Fed's umbrella, we'll call them the loser banks, they can now go access Fed funds at the same rate as all the cool kid banks, those are the primary dealers, and the main banks under the Fed's umbrella. Also, the FX swap lines, which were there before, but they extended them to some other countries. This is pretty simple. Just they print up funny money. That goes to the central banks, funny money dollars, goes to the central banks. The central banks give the Fed euros and yen. This is a completely separate video, and I'm going to be speaking to Brent Johnson about this next week in a full-length interview and a whiteboard video because this goes back to the dollar milkshake and the DXY going from 102 up to 110 up to 120. It's demand for dollars outside of the United States. And again, we'll get to that next week. The main takeaway from step number two is not only an explanation of what all these crazy abbreviations and four letter Fed solutions mean and how they work, but also we realize that as the Fed's balance sheet grows with these new facilities, they're creating additional deposits in the real economy, which can cause inflation. I'm beating a dead horse here because we need to understand that this is much different than when the Fed does transactions like repo exclusively with the primary dealers that doesn't create any additional deposits. It only creates more reserves. Step number three, does this cause hyperinflation? Let's notice the Fed's balance sheet. It has gone to infinity and beyond. That's for sure. It's taken all the assets off the balance sheet from the primary dealers and even the loser banks. Now those assets are on the Fed's balance sheet. In other words, they don't 
have to be sold. Uh -huh. That's the key. Also, it's given loans to the money market funds so they don't have to sell the debt or the assets. And it's given a loan to ABC Corp and the Fat Cat CEOs so they can continually pay their bills and they can continually issue more and more debt. So the Fed, in essence, has taken all the debt and the equity from the private sector, put it onto its balance sheet. Why that's important is because the Fed is the only entity here that doesn't care about profit and loss. They can keep these loans or keep rolling over these loans on their balance sheet forever. They can keep these assets, the mortgage-backed securities, the treasuries, the stock, the corporate bonds, whatever, they can keep it on their balance sheet forever. They never have to sell. Well, if all the assets, all the stocks, the equities, the commercial paper, the corporate bonds are now on the Fed's balance sheet, they never have to sell, the markets never go down. This props up the pension funds because there's just no sellers in the market. There's only buyers and that's the Fed. Well, you say, okay, does that solve all the problems? No, because how does the Fed ever unwind that once they start? It's like Peter Schiff said when they started quantitative easing. It was the monetary roach motel. Once you come in, you can never leave. It's a perfect analogy. If the Fed has all the stocks, the bonds, everything else on their balance sheet, how do they unwind that without creating an additional collapse? They most likely won't be able to. So the only release valve, the only option is to continually print more and more funny money. And we're already starting to see inflation in consumer goods due to the Cerveza sickness. As an example of this, let's check out a clip from CNBC. Trucking demand increased 18% last week from the previous due to the coronavirus response. Knight Swift, the nation's largest trucker, and others with large domestic networks outperforming the broader market this week. That's largely due to demand for van trucks that deliver about 70% of consumer goods. That jumped by 31%. Think hand sanitizer and toilet paper. Demand for refrigerated trucking, think food and perishables, that spiked by 33%. And let's remember the Fed is increasing the money supply while at the same time that increased money could be chasing not only the same amount of goods and services, but fewer goods and services due to the supply chain disruption we could see from the Cerveza sickness. I really want you to get your mind around the fact we could see domestic inflation, meaning the cost of goods and services in the United States going up while at the exact same time, the dollar, the value of the dollar outside of the United States relative to other currencies is going through the roof. We could see this bizarre type situation where Peter Schiff and Brent Johnson are both right at the exact same time. And keep in mind, I'm gonna be interviewing Brent Johnson next week to get more clarity on his thoughts, why he thinks the DXY is going from 102, 110, 120, maybe even higher. But we always hear from Peter Schiff that he thinks we're gonna have inflation, potentially hyperinflation in the United States but he never really explains how we get from A to Z. He doesn't always connect the dots. So in my interview with Peter Schiff, the full interview will be uploaded tomorrow. I actually ask him to give us specifics for domestic inflation, how we get from A to Z. Check out this clip, you're gonna love it. I want people to understand how the transfer mechanism works from the starting point. Let's say the Fed prints money, it goes into the reserve accounts, let's say for the primary dealers. And then it, then from the that standpoint, the primary dealers, let's say they have to do something with it, they create another deposit or the government spends it and then has to borrow the money. So that creates another deposit. And then how does that get into the real economy to where it can circulate and chase those those goods. Well, basically, all that happens is the government itself, which is separate from the Fed, which is not technically part of the government, but it functions as if it was part of the government. But what happens is the government 
borrows money, like they just announced today, another $850 billion um, stimulus, whatever plan, they're going to send checks to Americans. So what happens is the, uh, Federal Res the, the U.S. government then has to sell a bond, and the, the dealers go out into the market and buy the bonds from the right. government with money they get from the Fed. And then, the, and then the, the basically, the, the inter, these dealers take the bonds and, and sell them back to, to the Fed. Uh, and, and so the bonds go on the balance sheet of the Fed, and the Federal Reserve creates a deposit that, they, that goes from the primary dealer to the checking account of the U.S. government so that when the money is sent out to the taxpayer, he gets a check that he can cash. But basically, the government is borrowing that money into existence by issuing a Treasury bond that eventually goes to the Federal Reserve, there is now Federal Reserve notes in circulation, which are the dollars that we have, which are now liabilities of the Fed, and they're backed up by the Treasury bonds that the Fed now has on its balance sheet. And that's how the balance sheet you know, exploded up to four and a half trillion during quantitative easing, uh, because the Federal Reserve bought up all these Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities and replaced them with cash that is now circulating in the economy and that was used to bid up you know financial assets and, and, and things like that my personal opinion is we won't see hyperinflation in the short term or midterm maybe the long term five ten years out if you define hyperinflation by a 50 percent devaluation per year of the United States dollar. Midterm, I definitely think that we could see a 1970s type of inflation, meaning two to three years. In the short term, I don't think we're going to see 1970s inflation. I don't think we're going to see hyperinflation. I think what we will see is consumer goods, the cost of what you buy every single day. That's going to definitely go up. While at the same time, I think high ticket items like cars Price is going to go down. I think asset prices are definitely going to go down unless the Fed just buys everything in sight, puts it onto their balance sheet. For that, I have no way of giving you a prediction other than stay tuned. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be interesting. And let's all watch it together. For more content that will help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments check out this playlist right here and i will see you on the next video